Disclaimer time, guys. While we always strive to keep this channel family-friendly for all audiences, the very nature of this topic begs a disclaimer. Please be warned, not everything in here is going to be family-friendly. Literally, we just got news earlier today, or was it yesterday, that Vic had lawyered up. He's ready to fight. And this wasn't what started in the beginning, because this person is also a voice actor in the industry. Look! <laughs> Victor Joseph Mignana is a voiceover actor, on-screen actor, producer, and for those of you who don't know, a violent sexual predator of weapons. Well, remember that Vic Megamind guy? Well, guess what? There's more footage resurfaced. And now for something completely different. Edward Elric, Broly, Tamaki, Rohan, Uatu, and well over a hundred other characters in anime and video games. Vic Mignogna began his voice acting career in 1972, and since then, he has voiced characters that range from iconic to forgettable. But through it all, he has worked hard to maintain the appearance of a devout Christian who loves his fans. He loves all of these people as much as he loves you. But for years, people have been calling into question the true nature of Vic Mignogna. Accusations of homophobia have been around for ages. And in 2014, these accusations culminated in a Chains.org petition trying to get him recast on the show free. Most of these accusations of being anti-gay were due to Vic's unwillingness to sign Yaoi fan art. And for the most part, these accusations have usually been seen as frivolous and unsupportable, but they remain nonetheless. Vic has often been seen at cons hugging and kissing his fans on the cheek. This level of affection showing could be seen as cultural, as he is Italian, the behavior of a socially awkward but still friendly individual, or something far darker. In early 2017, the same anti-gay accusations that had been floating around for years were posted to a site called Pretty Ugly Little Liar, along with three much darker stories. The first link takes us to a video of Vic acting out a scene from Oran High School Host Club, in which Vic's character acts incredibly flirtatious to the character who is here, played by a young female fan. The second link takes us to a photograph of Vic holding a young fan by the arms and kissing her on the cheek. The third link takes you to a page of YouTube search results for keywords related to Vic Mignogna kissing people. And the fourth link takes us to a written account of Vic Mignogna crashing a panel and hugging slash groping a young fan on stage. Comments under this post mostly refer to Vic as being creepy, gross, and inappropriate. Once again, these accusations gain some attention, but only for a short time. Then, Dragon Ball Super Broly came out. Vic got to reprise his role as Broly, and things were looking great for him. Until the day the movie came out. January 16th, 2019. A Twitter user by the handle of at Han Leia tweeted Funimation asking why they employ a known pedophile. The user also tweeted screenshots of a post made to the informants in sight per the ugly little liar, talking about how Vic had allegedly groomed her and a friend over the internet for months, sending them merchandise and chatting with them about life, but when she ran into Vic in an elevator at a con, and as soon as the elevator doors had closed on them, this user alleges that he brought his hand up her skirt and began fondling her. She thought it had to have been a mistake. But as time went on, she came to realize that she had been sexually assaulted by someone she looked up to. That was over 10 years ago, when the user was only 16 years old. This time, the accusations didn't fade away with time. The next day, a YouTuber named Mars Girl got onto Twitter and created the KickFic hashtag, which quickly took off in becoming the rallying cry for everyone who wanted to get rid of Vic Mignogna. On January 21st, 2019, Vic Mignogna took to the internet to apologize and defend himself. He addressed the homophobic accusations first, as well as another accusation that he had been anti-Semitic at a convention. Vic's letter then went on to apologize to anyone ever made uncomfortable by his over-affectionate actions, the hugging, the kisses on the cheek or forehead. 
Vic said that from now on, for the purposes of never making a fan uncomfortable again, he would not make such physical contact with fans ever again, even if they requested it. Finally, Vic addressed the accusations of sexual assault, saying, quote, Any allegation of sexual harassment, sexual assault, or, most disturbingly, pedophilia, are completely and utterly false. My heart weeps for anyone who endures a violation of this kind, so to be accused of harming others in this way, I have no words. Since then, the anime community has been flooded with and divided by stories of Vic behaving inappropriately to female fans and actively pursuing romantic and sexual encounters with other voice actresses, even while he was engaged to his longtime partner, Michelle Specht. The most notable of the voice actresses who have come out and revealed her encounters with Vic is Monica Rial, the voice actress for Bulma Briefs on Dragon Ball Super, as well as hundreds more characters. In recent weeks, Monica has been extremely vocal against Vic, tweeting out on February 6th of this year, quote, dropping in to say this, stop harassing my friends and colleagues. You want the truth? It happened to me. I had hoped it wouldn't come to this, but here we are. I don't owe you anything, but if it'll stop it from happening to someone else, then so be it. I will tell you everything when I'm ready to do so. Please understand that this is difficult for me, my friends, and my loved ones. I thought it was a one-time occurrence with someone who had always been creepy with me. I chose to forgive him, even though he didn't ask for forgiveness. It wasn't until several of my dear friends came forward with similar stories recently that I realized that this happens regularly. io9 recently posted an exclusive article written by a woman named Beth Elderkin detailing unpleasant and in several cases despicable interactions that Vic's co-workers had to deal with thanks to Mr. Mignogna. There are several stories from anonymous former fans about how Vic disgusted them and detailed stories from the five women at the heart of Funimation's investigation. According to the article, Vic has denied some of these women's stories, but has also confirmed that he remembers some of them, but that those instances were consensual. This article has been referred to as the most comprehensive take on the Vic Mignogna scandal. However, it only takes into account the stories told by Vic's accusers and vaguely paraphrases Vic's rebuttals to some of the accusations without exploring the other sides of the story. Vic was fired from Rooster Teeth where he voiced Crow Brandwin on Ruby. And on February 11th, Funimation revealed on Twitter that following their own internal investigation, it was revealed Vic Mignogna would no longer have work at Funimation. Vic Mignogna's career as a voice actor was over. Vic Mignogna tweeted on February 10th, quote, Please remember, there are always two sides to every story. And that much is true in the case of Vic Mignogna. Vic has legions of loyal fans who oppose the treatment Vic endured from bloggers, tweeters, and even his co-workers. And they have been fighting battle after battle to defend Vic's honor. Innocent until proven guilty is the basis for any legitimate justice system. But in the court of public opinion, no such restriction exists. Vic Mignogna's fans have relied on the fact that every story about Vic sexually harassing or assaulting people came from people with no evidence. Many stories over the years weren't spoken of until several years had gone by. And, with no evidence to go off, it is easy for Vic's supporters to write them all off as unsubstantiated, especially when some of the stories and photographs have been faked. Okay, this is the photo link from Pretty Ugly Little Liar back in 2017. It was one of several links trying to expose Vic as a sexual assaulter. However, the person in this picture has since come out to explain that this picture is completely taken out of context. Her mother was the one taking the picture, and she even asked Vic for a hug and a kiss that she is seen receiving here. And when one piece of photographic evidence is exposed as fraudulent, it calls into question every other story. Since then, discoveries have been made that call into question the legitimacy of claims made by fans on social media, Tumblr, and other sites. The most infamous of these discoveries include screenshots of people arguing over whether they should Photoshop a photo of Vic with a fan to make it appear as though his hand was covering and grabbing the breast of a fan he was hugging. We'd like to say right here that while we cannot prove it one way or the other, there are people out there who claim that these screenshots of people plotting to fake evidence are themselves faked. 
As the controversy has grown, so have the claims being made. No longer content with accusing Vic Mignogna, the hashtag Kick Vic side has made claims that hashtag I stand with Vic side has made attempts to harm those accusing Mr. Mignogna. Most recently, photos of a busted open door circulating online claimed that one of Vic's supporters had called the police on her to swat her. Swatting is an act where the swatter calls the police and claims that illegal activities are occurring at the target's residence in the hopes that the authorities will raid the target's home and possibly even cause physical harm to the target. The very same photos were later found to have been posted by the same person in 2016 long before the hashtag KickVic movement had started. The alleged target, Miss Samantha Inouye Hart, had previously posted these pictures on August 19, 2016, explaining that the police battered down her door at 3 in the morning. The authorities pointed guns at her and her family and searched the home. After the search, the police explained that they had received a call saying that there was a burglary in progress. Again, this was over two years before the battle between Vic's supporters and Vic's accusers had taken any sort of form. What makes this even more damning is that Mars Girl herself revealed that Miss Hart was a part of the Funimation investigation. Now, what role she played in the investigation, we don't know. But the fact that somebody who was involved in the investigation went ahead and perpetrated a hoax like this in order to, we assume, hurt the opposition, make the opposition look like criminals and bad people, well, that just makes you wonder how unbiased was this investigation or was it just there to serve an agenda? Again, we don't know, because we don't know what roles he played in the investigation, as there are still many unanswered questions. Even Sean Shamel, the English voice of Son Goku, threw his hat into the ring, declaring that enough was enough. He called anyone who was attacking Monica or any other victim f Sean and Monica had effectively labeled as enemies anybody who disagreed or dared to question the claims of sexual assault that the kick fix side had been spreading. This included anybody who was unwilling to take Monica or any other alleged victim's testimony at face value as evidence enough to condemn a man, as well as anybody who already had their minds made up and decided to instead harass, mock, and even meme Monica and anybody else that was on the kick fix side. Lumping these two groups together did a disservice to Monica and Sean, as well as everyone else on the kick fix side. What further harmed Monica's credibility was her insistence on treating anyone who questioned her claims and questioned the kick fix movement as a harasser. She treated them as criminals on Twitter and began threatening to report these people to law enforcement and her lawyers. Whether or not she meant any of this is open to interpretation. But behaving in this way made her appear erratic and harmed her credibility in the eyes of Vic supporters, thus making any sort of consensus between the two groups nearly impossible at this time. It wasn't long before the Vic-related swatting was revealed to be a hoax. Sean Chamel admitted that he was, quote, very upset with the person who faked it. He continued, however, to make his own claims of swatting, stating, quote, Shortly after I posted about it, I did get a call from the Richardson Police Department asking if I was in trouble because someone was attempting to swat me. At the time of this recording, Sean has reaffirmed the claim that he was almost swatted twice more on Twitter. Obviously, we had to find out for ourselves. A quick Google search revealed that there is only one Richardson Police Department Sean could have been talking about. It's in Texas, located not too far away from the location where Funimation Studios is located. And though Sean Chamel lives in California, he also has an address near Funimation Studios, thus nearby the Richardson Police Department. We called the Richardson PD. Do you have any kind of a case number or anything? Uh, unfortunately, no. Somebody on uh, social media uh, was posting about some contact they had with you um, regarding an alleged 911 call, uh, and it's been causing some stir on Twitter. Was it something that's supposedly generated from Richardson? Uh, yes, the person specifically called out Richardson Department as having contacted him in regards to an alleged 911 call. Alright, I'm going to get a hold of my public information officer and see if he can find anything and then he'll call you back. Thank you very much, ma'am. You have a great one. Uh -huh. And we were connected to Kevin Perlick, one of the media relation employees. We asked about Sean Chamel and whether or not they had received any calls that mentioned him at all. We would like to thank Kevin for looking into this for us. He searched through all of the calls they had received on the day Sean claimed the police contacted him, but Kevin could not find 
any such call matching Mr. Shamel's claims. When asked if there was any reason that the police might receive a 911 call that might lead them to breaking down the doors of a residence, but instead calling the resident to see if they were okay, Kevin couldn't give us a solid answer. He told us that if the call was deemed urgent, that they would of course send officers to investigate. But if the call didn't sound urgent, and if they were able to reach the person who was allegedly in danger, they might resort to calling the alleged victim and see if anything was really amiss. Even with these details on department policy of handling these kinds of calls, the Richardson Police Department received no calls regarding Mr. Shamel of any kind. Later on that same day when we called Richardson to confirm Sean's claims, Monica Rial returned to Twitter with a letter explaining, this time with a far less aggressive tone of writing, exactly what had happened between her and Vic, what came of their interactions, and what it meant personally to her. Monica's letter spoke about how she used to see Vic as a friend, how she would address his bad behavior to him, how he would apologize, but eventually would go back to doing improper, uncomfortable things. Things that those that knew of them would call sexual harassment. She talked about how once he brought her to a hotel room and forced her to kiss him. And even after that incident, she forgave him. It wasn't until later, according to her letter, that she found out that he had also done similar things to friends, colleagues, and convention goers. It wasn't until after the Broly movie premiered that three of Monica's friends came to her to reveal what Vic had previously done to them. This led Monica to speak to Funimation's investigators and be open about the controversy on Twitter, so that it wouldn't go ignored. Monica went on to apologize to the fans that she attacked and threatened on Twitter. She said that she felt she was doing what she had to do to protect herself. Even so, she claims to regret those interactions and wishes to end the fighting. In the end of her letter, she called for kindness and then signed off. Recently. A document was leaked revealing Vic's full, uncut responses to the accusations in the io9 article, where his responses had been boiled down to short, one-word, and one-sentence answers. You can find this leaked document by checking the linked sources below. Vic's responses to these allegations confirm that he has previously invited women to his hotel room where he seemed to have sexual intentions. But in each of those cases, he claims to have backed off and ceased all pursuits as soon as consent was refused or withdrawn. The only admission to a non-consensual encounter was a public moment where he began playfully tickling a voice actress who he claimed was undergoing a lot of stress immediately prior to a panel where she would have to improvise. Vic's responses go on to claim that most of these women have had many friendly interactions with him in the years since the alleged incidents, and never spoke to him about their feelings prior to the hashtag kick Vic movement. What does all this tell us? What does this mean? Vic Mignogna, whether you like him or not, has admitted to pursuing women while he was engaged to someone else. This admission is our starting point, because it is the only thing not being called into question by any party. And regardless of what your baseline for what's okay with sex is, religious and non-religious people alike will often agree that cheating or attempting to cheat on someone is not an honorable thing. And Vic is a professing Christian. Perhaps this is what Vic was referring to when he said that he was taking his time to quote, recommit to God, and to seek the help of a counselor. This kind of offense isn't necessarily a fireable offense, but it doesn't clear his name either. Monica, Sean, and Funimation as a whole have had no problem throwing Vic under the bus. This could very well be because the Funimation investigation found he had been a nuisance, or a harasser to the women who worked there. While we don't know what their investigation found, we can say with some certainty that it didn't find him guilty of any pedophilia or rape crimes, because if they had found evidence of such crimes, Funimation would have been required to go to the police with their evidence. And Vic would be standing trial in a court of law, not in the court of public opinion. It is going to be very hard, if not impossible, for justice to be served in the Vic Mignogna scandal. It seems that our culture has decided that accusers should be believed and the accused should have their lives and careers destroyed. Some will even go so far as to talk about manufacturing evidence, but it's okay because they really believe it. In response to this guilty until proven innocent mindset, a subculture has developed that lashes out at anyone who dares tarnish a man's name without evidence, 
even before hearing all there is to hear. It is reasonable to say that neither one of these ideologies are good for our culture and our society. For you to be able to bring allegations against a man and ruin his career with no evidence, to ruin his life with no evidence, only the words of a few people, or even a lot of people, to be able to do that with no evidence is dangerous. However, it is equally wrong to simply write off and dismiss any allegations brought against somebody simply because you like that person, or simply because you are making the assumption that they are all lies. We need to operate on an evidence-based way of thinking. We need to make sure that our opinions are derived from what we know to be true. And if there's a gap in the evidence, if we do not have all of the information, we as a people should not be rushing to judgment one way or the other. We need to seek out the truth. And anybody who tells you not to seek out the truth, anyone who tells you not to question what is being told to you, they are not helping the situation. A whole generation seems ready to believe or reject what they hear without doing any personal research. Only their previous beliefs will affect whether they're on the side of believe or reject. And that's no way for a community or a culture to survive. You should not be on Vic's side. You should not be on Monica Real's side. You shouldn't care what Vic's fan club, the Risen Bull Rangers, have to say. You shouldn't be on the side of anonymous accusers. You should be on the side of truth. You should call Vic out for cheating on his fiance. You should call Sean Schmel out for lying about almost being swatted. You should call fans on both sides out who threatened each other with doxing. And you should hope that truth is found and brought to light. And that is no matter what that truth is. Maybe you want Vic to be innocent, and it turns out he's not. That's okay. As long as you can accept that you were wrong. And the same goes to the side that really believes that people like Monica are telling the truth. You can believe that she's being honest. But what if one day she reveals it was all a lie? Will you stubbornly act like you weren't wrong? We're not claiming to know the truth. Because we don't know what the truth is. The only thing that we do know is that regardless of what you believe about this situation, there are ways that you should and should not act. Let's be respectful of each other and work to find the truth. We are anime fans, and believe it or not, we're better than this. <laughs>